here are the fabrics that we'll be using to make this baby nest i have this pattern colored a fabric is a mixture of white brown and black and wine i think and i have a very dark brown bed sheet cutting bed sheet fabric underneath so both of them are bed sheet fabrics so this is what we'll be using for this project my fabric is folded into should i say four <laughs> my fabrics are folded into two i have the first fold here and right here is the second fold so it is folded as if you want to cut a circle skirt the reason why i folded this is to make our markings easier and you know this is what my screen can accommodate right now so what i'm going to do next is to keep one of these sheets aside we're going to use one to cut out our pattern and use that one to cut out the second bed sheet fabric so i'm going to be making use of the brown one so that you guys can see clearly what i am doing unfold the two fabrics are measuring 19 by 27 inches by the time we open the fabrics up we're going to be having uh, measurements of 38 by 54 inches i'll keep this one aside and we're going to be working on the brown bed sheets so on the side where we have the 19 inches i'm going to come right here and mark nine i mark nine inches i mark eight inches and i'll be left with two inches here so on this side where i have the 27 inches i'm going to mark 17 inches i'm going to mark eight inches and i'll be left with about two inches at the end i want to make sure i have a perfect rectangle on this side so i'll come right here what i marked here was 17 inches right so i come right here and remark that 17 inches then i check to make sure that what i have here which is nine inches is what i have here if not i'll make that adjustment when necessary okay so i come right here and mark nine inches and then i'll connect this to this like so come here connect this so i'll come right here measure from the top to this point and what i have here is 25 so i come right here from this top again i mark 25 then measure from this folded edge i have 17 right here i come right here place my tape rule mark 17 then i'm going to connect from this bottom here to this side here from this side here to this side here please go ahead and mark two inches from the corner here so mark two inches diagonally and then connect do the same thing for this side mark two inches diagonally and connect come right here at the edge as well mark two inches diagonally and connect for the part that is going to form the bed bump where we have the eight inches marked so around that curved area you can decide to mark eight inches from the inner bed parts okay outwards and where that eight inches ends you go ahead and mark two inches after it and connect to the edge of the outer fabric so if you want it symmetrical that way go ahead and do what i've just explained if you want it like the initial uh, markings that we have done go ahead and you know do that as so well. we are sort of like creating a curved out shape for these three places do you understand and the only part that we are going to cut out is this part right here so now that i'm done shaping out the edge of this part what i'm going to do next is to place this on top of this i'll be using this brown that i've shaped out as the pattern so i go ahead and place it on top and once i do that i'm shaping out this edge as well so the next thing i'm going to do right now is to keep this one aside and 
we're going to be transferring the markings that we have here to this other side. So it is either you transfer the markings or you go ahead and remark this so that it appears on this other side. You want it to show on both sides. Okay, this will make sewing a lot more easier for you. So what I've repeated on this side, I'm going to go ahead and repeat it on the other side and come show you guys what we are going to do. So next. after repeating it for this other side, this is what I have. And by the time we open this up, I just opened it halfway, okay? So here is my two inch here. I'm just showing you gradually. So this is what it looks like. Here is the folded part. This is the other end. So what we are going to do is whatever markings that we have in the first half, I'm going to replicate it on this other side that doesn't have the markings, okay? So I'll just go ahead and do that off camera. So here is the first half. This part here is the first half that I marked. Right here is the part that I replicated. For whatever replication that I have done, it's just repeating what I have on this first quarter on this side and then what I have in the entire half here, I replicated it on this um, side as well. So the next thing I'm going to do is to place this on top of the other bed sheet fabric, on top of the other cutting bed sheet fabric. I'm going to place it right on top with wrong side to wrong side touching. So this part that has the chalk marks are going to be facing me. It is what is going to enable us to sew this properly. You need to actually see the markings to sew this. And the right side is the part that is going to be on the outside. The wrong side will be on the inside. So I'm going to place this on top of the other fabric with wrong side to wrong side touching. So it's very, very important that you take note of that. Please make sure that when you place the fabrics on top, especially when you are sewing, make sure that the edges align properly. Another thing that you can do is to ensure that all these places that are marked all around here and here are pinned down. It is going to make your work so much easier. What I'm going to do now is take this to my sewing machine and sew this up. But first, I'll leave about five inches at the bottom here and five inches at the bottom here, okay? I'm going to go ahead and sew this all around like so, leaving a five inch opening here. Do the same thing for the bigger side. Sew from here all around, come right back, leaving a five inch opening here. The opening that we are leaving here is for the stuffing that we are going to put into this um, fabric that we are sewing together. So I'm done sewing, but I made a few modifications, especially to the external parts, okay? I did not change the dimension on the inside where the main bed will be. The only parts that I changed was this outside parts, okay? Initially, when we opened this up, the distance from the bed, you know, to the end of the fabric was about 10 inches. I had eight inches right here where we are going to insert another stuffing and I had two inches externally, but I reduced it to five inches and two inches because I felt that eight inches was a bit much. And by the time we stuff it, it is going to be really big. So those were the only corrections that I made. So I'm going to put the dimensions on the screen, okay, for when you have your um, fabric unfold. So the other thing I did was to come right at the opening here on the pattern fabric. I did two buttonhole stitches. The reason why I made them will be revealed later on. So I don't know if you can see it. I have the two buttonhole stitches right here. What I did before I did the buttonhole stitches was to make sure that I supported my fabric with a little bit of fusible interfacing so that while I'm making the buttonhole stitches, it doesn't rip through the fabric because the fabric is um, really, really soft. So I made the buttonhole stitches about three quarter inches or 0 0.75 inches from the edge of the fabric. Okay, so can you see? So you can go with about three quarter inches, you can go with about one inch from the edge of your fabric. So what I'm going to do right now is to go ahead and stuff the bedding parts of this um, bed nest that we are making. So what I'm going to use for this part is a flat foam. So here is the flat foam. I made sure I cut it to size for the bedding dimensions that we have on the fabric so that this um, foam can sit well on the inside. And you would notice that I have three layers of foam right here. Altogether, they measure 
1.5 inches so this is what i have and this is what i'm going to use i used top bond to glue each layer together so they don't separate by the time i um try to you know push this in so i'll just go ahead and start putting it in through the opening that i have at the end of the fabric um right there okay So after stuffing, this is what the bed part looks like. So you can see that it is kind of raised. Okay, this is what it looks like in the front and this is what it looks like at the back. So we have the bed part of this stuffed and I wanted this as flat as possible. That is why I used that type of foam. So the next thing I'm going to do is to go on to seal up this bed part with a stitch. So after sealing this part up, the next thing I'm going to do before stuffing this side is to sew one inch from the edge, okay, from the edge of the fabric, starting from the stitch beside the opening that we have here. I'm going to come around like this, okay? I'm going to come around, sew one inch from the edge, go around again and stop just before the opening. The one inch that we are going to sew now is going to form the casing for the straps or for the rope that we are going to insert into that one inch space. Here is the um, rope. I made it from this pattern bedsheet fabric. The width of this uh, fabric is two inches. I folded half an inch here. I folded half an inch on the other side. So like this now, it is measuring one inch. We are going to fold it like this. Okay, we are going to fold it like this. Take it to a sewing machine and stitch up the edge. This is what we are going to insert into the one inch casing that I said I was going to sew and the length of this is measuring about 200 inches. I made this really long so that I don't get shorthanded at the end of the day. So I'll go ahead and sew that one inch and then sew up the um, rope that we have here. After sewing the one inch right here, as you can see, we are going to begin to stuff. I've also sewn the rope that we are going to insert into this one inch space so i'm going to keep the rope aside and i'm going to begin to stuff this through our opening that we have here we are only stuffing the five inch space and i'm going to be using this uh, polyfill material to stuff it's sort of like a stuffing used for pillows so this is what i'm going to use to stuff the five inch space and it is going to go all around the bed so i'm going to start from here and we are going to see how this looks by the time we are done stuffing. So this is how it is going to look all around when we have fully stuffed um, around the bed. So just keep pushing more material in and of course filling it up. So after stuffing the sides, this is what it looks like. In order for me to actually get it to this end, I had to use a body spray bottle to push it so that it is really tight around here okay so this is what it looks like this is what we have what i'm going to do next is to seal up this part a little bit so that i can stuff the remainder of this part so i seal about three inches here three inches here and then stuff it little by little till it feels very full and then the little um, spacing that i have there i can go ahead and use a needle and thread to seal it up if i cannot use a sewing machine so okay. after cl um, closing up this part what I'm going to do next is to seal up the one inch space that we have here. Okay, I'm going to seal it up totally. And the next thing we're going to do is to run a bias tape to finish off the edges of this um, bed nest so it looks very, very neat. So I'm done sewing the one inch space. What's left for us to do is to seal up the raw edge of this bed nest with a bias tape. So I made a bias tape from this same fabric. I have two methods where I use a bias tape maker and a cardboard. They are super easy. If you don't have a bias tape maker, you can use the cardboard method. So I'm going to go ahead and use this to seal up the raw edges. Okay, so I turn it to the wrong side 
and I'm going to take this to my sewing machine now, place it about half an inch away from the edge and sew all the way around. My bias step is measuring, I think, around 200 um, inches as well. So I'll take this to my sewing machine. Sew by half an inch all around. And when I do that, I'll go ahead and fold this over and then stitch it down to hold it in place, okay? To close up the raw edges. So that is what I'm going to do right now. So after sealing up the edge with the bias tape, concealing all raw edges, I'm going to get this rope that I made earlier and we are going to need a safety pin for this part, okay? Because we are going to be inserting it through this spacing. So the button holes that I made, I'm going to insert this into one of them. And we are going to pull it through Okay, we are just going to continue to push it through like so till we come out at the second button hole. After passing the rope through, this is what we have. So the next thing we are going to do is to pull the rope tight so that we can bring this part up. Okay, so I'm going to pull it tight. So can you see what I'm doing? I'm pulling it, I'm pulling the rope so that this part would go up like this. So after gathering the edges with the rope that I inserted, this is what it looks like. And then I went ahead to tie it at that point so that it doesn't stretch out. So you can see that this part that we have here has bumped upwards a little bit okay so this side sort of like forms a protection in case your baby decides to you know roll over if you decide that you do not want to use this pattern side of the fabric as the bed you can decide to you know, flip it over to the other side and use i hope you find this tutorial helpful to you and now you can make your own big sized baby nest so i hope you enjoyed this video if you did kindly give us a thumbs up subscribe to our channel Turn on the bell so you get updates when I post new videos. And that's it. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you guys in my next tutorial. Bye.